So, you've decided to start your own Minecraft server and don't know where to begin. First off, congratulations! You're starting down a path that can lead to countless sleepless nights, making memories with some of the coolest people on the internet. If, and it's a big if, you take your time and do it right. I'm far from perfect, but over the last year and a half, I've had the pleasure of building an amazing community on the Unity SMP server. So here is my ultimate guide to running a Minecraft server. Well, actually, my ultimate guide to running a vanilla Minecraft server. Wait, no, it's more like my ultimate guide to running a vanilla community-oriented server. Maybe it's my ultimate guide. My goal with this video is to give you the basics of what it takes to start a server, how to manage a community, and hopefully you can learn from the successes and mistakes I've made along the way. This will be a relatively broad overview, but if I feel like making another video getting into the real nitty gritty, I might make a part two. We'll see. So let's get started. First off, let's talk about this. I've had the pleasure of building an amazing community. Though it was a part of a snappy video intro, it's something I'd like to briefly cover before we get in above our heads here. You are not, nor should your goal be, to single-handedly build or run a community. If my character had fingers there, would have been air quotes there. Your role as a server owner should be to provide an environment in which a community has the potential to flourish. You are picking out a nice flower pot, getting some rich soil, and planting a seed. And no amount of micromanaging can force that seed to grow. You just have to sit back and watch as the seed, or server, begins to sprout and grow into something beautiful from the environment you've created. Now, before you go and get a god complex based on that analogy, keeping your ego in check is a seemingly innocuous but very important part of running a server. You own a Minecraft server, so that puts you just above Twitch chat moderator and right below a Reddit user who makes it to the front page with a repost, as far as online clout goes. So don't get all power hungry and demand your player base worship you and never question your decisions. But wait, you don't even have any players, do you little buddy? much less a Minecraft server itself. So let's talk about that. To run a Minecraft server, you first need to purchase a Minecraft server. So there you are, feeling all inspired. You're gonna do it, you're really gonna do it. You have 10 bucks of disposable income you can burn and you fire up the old Google and you're immediately overwhelmed. The first five Google pages have real options and the old tried and true method of picking the first link under the Google ad isn't gonna work. So you turn to YouTube. Top five cheap Minecraft servers. Yep, same thing. An overwhelming amount of results, and if you watch any of them, you start to notice that the number ones on their list seem to always be the provider that is sponsoring the video. Hmm. Well, I'll save you some time. There are no right answers. But we have an advantage. We're looking to run a vanilla server, which means to start out, you can get a relatively inexpensive provider. You don't have any players yet, so the server should run great. As your community grows, you will have to invest in a better provider and implement some back-end solutions to improve the experience for players. All right, you've picked out a nice flower po server provider. Heck, you even went as far as to make a Discord. Look at you go. Now comes a very important step in all of this. You were so excited to start a server, you forgot to take a moment and think about what kind of server you want. This is critical, because as you move on to advertising your server, you need to provide an explanation for what you expect from players and what players can expect from the server. A sort of mission statement, if you will. In my case, I had burned through a few servers where you'd log on and all you really were was another little head on the tab list. A tiny fish in a big sea, if you will. So my goal was to create a server that focused on community and unity between the players. Since community Minecraft server sounds like the kind of server you'd go to when you want to get your gen eds out of the way before you apply to a real Minecraft server, I went with Unity as my server name. This served a dual purpose. First, Unity Minecraft server on a Reddit post gives people an immediate summation of the atmosphere I was looking to provide. Secondly, it sounds badass, am I right? Just make sure you know what you want and make that clear in the ads you post, or else you're asking a lot out of a random stranger on the internet to just take a flying leap and hope your empty little directionless server is a good spot to land. 
I think I'll just jump in here real quick and mention this. I was fortunate enough to start my server ownership with a good friend named Thin Man Mr. Jones. Link in the description. Thin is wise beyond his years. Those years are still unclear, but based on his voice, I'm guessing 40, 50, 60. It was helpful to get all the Discord stuff together and offer some input on things, but the real value in starting your server with someone like Thin is being able to bounce all of your ideas and thoughts off of them. A different perspective can be really advantageous and will be priceless to you as you get deeper and deeper into running your server. But not everybody's gonna be as lucky as I was. Not everybody has a thin. And frankly, I'm not really inclined to share him. All right, let's get back on track. You have a server, you have a name, you have an idea of the type of community you want, you have a world loaded up, and you have a discord. And maybe you've got one or two friends from past servers willing to give your grand endeavor a shot. But now comes the scary part. Casting your line out into the big ol' internet ocean and seeing what bites. Well, don't worry. If it's anything like my experience, you'll be spammed with responses soon enough. Granted, regardless of how clear of instructions you give them on how you want to be contacted to join, they'll comment on your post, send you PMs with incoherent lead speak, send your mom a postcard with their username, literally anything but what you asked for. But that's okay, at least you're getting some interest. Now don't get too excited and add any old Death King 1265 to your Discord. Assuming you posted your ads to Reddit, take a moment and look through their comment and post history, and relatively speaking, judge the book by its cover. This is sort of your only option to ensure you're adding what appears to be a good player to your little community. You don't have the luxury of being super picky since you're just starting out, but this is the start of your community and it's important to make sure it has its best shot of succeeding. Now, no matter how scrupulous and Sherlock Holmesian you are, you're still gonna get some bad apples. Unity's Discord has had its fair share. From porn spammers to voice chat screamers, we've seen it all. But don't be disheartened. As long as you're quick with the ban button, it'll be okay. Sort of a second firewall that most servers, including Unity, use is a server application process. You don't have to ask for their social security number, GPA, and a pregnancy test, but having potential players fill out a quick questionnaire can be super useful. Now, I don't think we've ever turned a player away strictly based on their application, but it is helpful to set your expectations about that player. We ask a variety of questions on the Unity application, but the two that carry the most weight are how often and for how long do you usually play? and do you plan to use voice chat? These two questions go back to my original mission statement with Unity, to build a tight-knit, community-focused server. If a potential player says they only play on the weekends for an hour or so and don't use voice chat, we know they aren't really a fit for Unity. And that's nothing against those players. There are plenty of other servers out there that they'd fit into better. You don't have to waste your life away building oversized, empty mega builds 10 hours a day to be a good player. It's just not the type of player we want on Unity. So keep your mission statement in mind and consider making a questionnaire that will help you gauge how a potential player will fit into that framework. Okay, back to that analogy we started with, that if you're still watching, you've probably forgotten about by now. We have a nice pot, some good soil, and a warm little windowsill. And now with the players you've gained from your ads, your little seed has been planted. Now just sit back and wait for it to grow. You've gotta be patient though you won't have an amazing community overnight. I don't know, some kids in my fifth grade biology class planted their lima beans and came back the next day with bushes. But I just had a styrofoam cup full of soggy dirt. Anyways, be patient. If you've set up your framework halfway decent, you'll start to see growth. And with growth comes a whole new set of issues. The topics I'm about to brush over can get super in depth super quick, but I'll save that for another time. As your community grows, so will problems on the server. And even if you waste your life away building oversized empty mega builds, you won't be able to manage it all on your own. One thing you can do on your own is to invest in a more powerful server or switch to a more premium provider. With more players comes more lag, and with more lag comes more players whining about lag. And that's not fun for anyone. So whether it's through crowdfunding from your players or you just feeling all warm and fuzzy about your little community and shoving a few more quarters into your computer's SD card slot, invest in a better server. I made the mistake of sticking with a low quality provider for too long. I guess I have commitment issues. I don't know. I did upgrade the server's RAM and all that good stuff, but the service was low quality from the start, and I should have left while the getting was good. Uh, where were we? Ah, yes, more players, more problems. In order to manage your server and your Discord, you'll want to select a few of your more trustworthy players to become your moderators or admins. In my case, the community is mature and responsible enough that we don't really need the mid-tier of moderators to manage the Discord and such, so I just had to pick a few admins. Thankfully, as I previously mentioned, I had Thin. 
Bam, admin numero uno, my right hand man. Down the road, I chose a few other of my more trustworthy players to become admins, but you'll want to make sure you have an appropriate ratio of admins to players. Not only because you'll want your admins to have some street cred in the community, but because in order for them to operate effectively, they'll most likely be opt. Now, on a semi-vanilla or modded server, you can have permission-based ranks and such to limit and control power. But on vanilla, it's pretty much all or nothing. This goes back to making sure you trust your admins as they can quite literally make or break your server. You'll want to keep an eye on them just to be sure everything's kosher at first, but if you've chosen well, they'll act as extensions of yourself by helping players and ensuring that the community maintains its original mission statement. Well, that's about it, I guess. This is definitely a massive oversimplification of what it takes to run a Minecraft server, but in just 10 minutes and 18 seconds, we've covered what should help you get started. In case you've just skipped to the end of the video to hear my dope new outro music, which I can't blame you, I'll just sum up the main points real quick one more time. Start your server with a goal in mind. Know what you're looking for in players and know what you can do to help those players reach the collective goal of the server. Create infrastructure through ads, application, rules, and discord management that will ensure the type of growth and community you're looking for. Invest in the server when the time comes. You will not regret it and your players will appreciate it. And lastly, surround yourself with admins you trust and that will help you reach your goals for the server. I started Unity a year and a half ago and I don't claim to know everything, but through trial and error and a goal for the server that I've never strayed from, I've had the pleasure of being part of an amazing and loving little community. It may not be much to an outsider, but it's my little corner of the internet and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Hope you found this helpful, or at least mildly interesting, but that's all I've got for now. Bye! See, I told you it was dope outro music.